A hymn is a type of song, usually religious, specifically written for the purpose of adoration or prayer, and typically addressed to a deity or deities, or to a prominent figure or personification. The word hymn derives from Greek hymnos, hymnos which means, a song of praise. A writer of hymns is known as a hymnodist. The singing or composition of hymns is called hymnody. Collections of hymns are known as hymnals or hymn books. Hymns may or may not include instrumental accompaniment. Although most familiar to speakers of English in the context of Christianity, hymns are also a fixture of other world religions, especially on the Indian subcontinent. Hymns also survive from antiquity, especially from Egyptian and Greek cultures. Some of the oldest surviving examples of notated music are hymns with Greek texts. Origins <inaudible> 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 Ancient hymns include the Egyptian great hymn to the Aten, composed by Pharaoh Akhenaten, the Hurrian hymn to Nikol, the Vedas, a collection of hymns in the tradition of Hinduism, and the Psalms, a collection of songs from Judaism. The Western tradition of hymnody begins with the Homeric hymns, a collection of ancient Greek hymns, the oldest of which were written in the 7th century BC, praising deities of the ancient Greek religions. Surviving from the 3rd century BC is a collection of six literary hymns Himoi by the Alexandrian poet Callimachus. Patristic writers began applying the term hymnos, or hymnus in Latin, to Christian songs of praise, and frequently used the word as a synonym for psalm. Topic. Christian hymnody Originally modeled on the Book of Psalms and other poetic passages commonly referred to as canticles in the scriptures, Christian hymns are generally directed as praise to the Christian God. Many refer to Jesus Christ either directly or indirectly. Since the earliest times, Christians have sung psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, both in private devotions and in corporate worship Matthew chapter 26 verse 30, Mark chapter 14 verse 26, Acts chapter 16 verse 25, 1 Cor 14 26, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, James chapter 5 verse 13, cf. Revelation chapter 5 verses 8 to 10, Revelation chapter 14 verses 1 to 5. Non-scriptural hymns i.e. not psalms or canticles from the early church still sung today include Fos Hilarin, Sub Tum Presidium, and Te Diem. One definition of a hymn is A lyric poem, reverently and devotionally conceived, which is designed to be sung and which expresses the worshipper's attitude toward God or God's purposes in human life. It should be simple and metrical in form, genuinely emotional, poetic and literary in style, spiritual in quality, and in its ideas so direct and so immediately apparent as to unify a congregation while singing it. Christian hymns are often written with special or seasonal themes and these are used on holy days such as Christmas, Easter and the Feast of All Saints, or during particular seasons such as Advent and Lent. Others are used to encourage reverence for the Bible or to celebrate Christian practices such as the Eucharist or baptism. Some hymns praise or address individual saints, particularly the Blessed Virgin Mary. Such hymns are particularly prevalent in Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy and to some extent High Church Anglicanism. A writer of hymns is known as a hymnodist, and the practice of singing hymns is called hymnody. The same word is used for the collectivity of hymns belonging to a particular denomination or period e.g. 19th century Methodist hymnody would mean the body of hymns written and or used by Methodists in the 19th century. A collection of hymns is called a hymnal or hymnary. These may or may not include music. A student of hymnody is called a hymnologist, and the scholarly study of hymns, hymnists and hymnody is hymnology. The music to which a hymn may be sung is a hymn tune. In many evangelical churches, traditional songs are classified as hymns while more contemporary worship songs are not considered hymns. The reason for this distinction is unclear, but according to some it is due to the radical shift of style and devotional thinking that began with the Jesus movement and Jesus music. Of note, in recent years, Christian traditional hymns have seen a revival in some churches, usually more reformed or Calvinistic in nature, as modern hymn writers such as Keith and Kristen Getty and Sovereign Grace Music have reset old lyrics to new melodies, revised old hymns and republished them, or simply written a song in accordance with Christian hymn standards according to whom, such as the hymn, In Christ Alone. 
Topic: <laughs> Music and accompaniment. In ancient and medieval times, string instruments such as the harp, lyre and lute were used with psalms and hymns. Since there is a lack of musical notation in early writings, the actual musical forms in the early church can only be surmised. During the Middle Ages a rich hymenity developed in the form of Gregorian chant or plainsong. This type was sung in unison, in one of eight church modes, and most often by monastic choirs. While they were written originally in Latin, many have been translated, a familiar example is the 4th century of the Father's Heart Begotten sung to the 11th century plainsong Divinum Mysterium. Topic. Western Church Later hymenody in the Western Church introduced four-part vocal harmony as the norm, adopting major and minor keys, and came to be led by organ and choir. It shares many elements with classical music. Today, except for choirs, more musically inclined congregations and a cappella congregations, hymns are typically sung in unison. In some cases complementary full settings for organ are also published, in others organists and other accompanists are expected to transcribe the four-part vocal score for their instrument of choice. To illustrate Protestant usage, in the traditional services and liturgies of the Methodist churches, which are based upon Anglican practice, hymns are sung often accompanied by an organ during the processional to the altar, during the receiving of communion, during the recessional, and sometimes at other points during the service. These hymns can be found in a common book such as the United Methodist Hymnal. The doxology is also sung after the tithes and offerings are brought up to the altar. Contemporary Christian worship, as often found in evangelicalism and Pentecostalism, may include the use of contemporary worship music played with electric guitars and the drum kit, sharing many elements with rock music. Other groups of Christians have historically excluded instrumental accompaniment, citing the absence of instruments in worship by the Church in the first several centuries of its existence, and adhere to an unaccompanied a cappella congregational singing of hymns. These groups include the Brethren often both open and exclusive, the Churches of Christ, Mennonites, Primitive Baptists, and certain Reformed Churches, although during the last century or so, several of these, such as the Free Church of Scotland have abandoned this stance. Topic. Eastern Church Eastern Christianity the Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox and Eastern Catholic Churches have a very rich and ancient hymnographical tradition. Eastern chant is almost always a cappella, and instrumental accompaniment is rare. The central form of chant in the Eastern Orthodoxy is Byzantine chant, which is used to chant all forms of liturgical worship. Exceptions include the Coptic Orthodox tradition which makes use of the cymbals and the triangle musical instrument, the Indian Orthodox Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church which makes use of the organ and the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, which also uses drums, cymbals and other instruments on certain occasions. Topic. Development of Christian hymnody Thomas Aquinas, in the introduction to his commentary on the Psalms, defined the Christian hymn thus, "...hymnus est laus dei cum cantico, canticum autum exaltatio mentis de idernus habita, prorumpens in vosum." A hymn is the praise of God with song, a song is the exaltation of the mind dwelling on eternal things, bursting forth in the voice." The Protestant Reformation resulted in two conflicting attitudes towards hymns. One approach, the regulative principle of worship, favored by many Zwinglians, Calvinists and some radical reformers, considered anything that was not directly authorized by the Bible to be a novel and Catholic introduction to worship, which was to be rejected. All hymns that were not direct quotations from the Bible fell into this category. Such hymns were banned, along with any form of instrumental musical accompaniment, and organs were removed from churches. Instead of hymns, biblical psalms were chanted, most often without accompaniment, to very basic melodies. This was known as exclusive psalmody. Examples of this may still be found in various places, including in some of the Presbyterian churches of Western Scotland. The other Reformation approach, the normative principle of worship, produced a burst of hymn writing and congregational singing. Martin Luther is notable not only as a reformer, but as the author of many hymns including Ein Fest Berg ist unser Gott. A mighty fortress is our God, which is sung today even by Catholics, and Gelibet seist du, Jesu Christ. Praise be to you, Jesus Christ. 
For Christmas, Luther and his followers often used their hymns, or chorales, to teach tenets of the faith to worshippers. The first Protestant hymnal was published in Bohemia in 1532 by the Unitas Fratrum. Count Zinzendorf, the Lutheran leader of the Moravian Church in the 18th century wrote some 2,000 hymns. The earlier English writers tended to paraphrase biblical texts, particularly Psalms. Isaac Watts followed this tradition, but is also credited as having written the first English hymn which was not a direct paraphrase of Scripture. Watts (1674–1748), whose father was an elder of a dissenter congregation, complained at age 16 that when allowed only psalms to sing, the faithful could not even sing about their Lord, Christ Jesus. His father invited him to see what he could do about it. The result was Watts' first hymn, "Behold the glories of the Lamb." Found in few hymnals today, the hymn has eight stanzas in common meter and is based on Revelation chapter 5 verses 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, relying heavily on scripture. Watts wrote metered texts based on New Testament passages that brought the Christian faith into the songs of the church. Isaac Watts has been called the father of English hymnody, but Eric Routley sees him more as the liberator of English hymnody. Because his hymns, and hymns like them, moved worshippers beyond singing only Old Testament psalms, inspiring congregations and revitalizing worship, later writers took even more freedom, some even including allegory and metaphor in their texts. Charles Wesley's hymns spread Methodist theology, not only within Methodism, but in most Protestant churches. He developed a new focus, expressing one's personal feelings in the relationship with God as well as the simple worship seen in older hymns. Wesley wrote, Wesley's contribution, along with the Second Great Awakening in America led to a new style called gospel, and a new explosion of sacred music writing with Fanny Crosby, Lena Sindel, Philip Bliss, Ira D. Sankey, and others who produced testimonial music for revivals, camp meetings, and evangelistic crusades. The tune style or form is technically designated, gospel songs, as distinct from hymns. Gospel songs generally include a refrain or chorus and usually though not always a faster tempo than the hymns. As examples of the distinction, Amazing Grace is a hymn, no refrain, but How Great Thou Art is a gospel song. During the 19th century, the gospel song genre spread rapidly in Protestantism and to a lesser but still definite extent, in Roman Catholicism. The gospel song genre is unknown in the worship per se by Eastern Orthodox churches, which rely exclusively on traditional chants, a type of hymn. The Methodist revival of the 18th century created an explosion of hymn writing in Welsh, which continued into the first half of the 19th century. The most prominent names among Welsh hymn writers are William Williams Pantysillon and Anne Griffiths. The second half of the 19th century witnessed an explosion of hymn tune composition and congregational four-part singing in Wales, along with the more classical sacred music of composers ranging from Mozart to Monteverdi. The Catholic Church continued to produce many popular hymns such as Led, Kindly Light, Silent Night, O Sacrament Divine and Faith of Our Fathers. Many churches today use contemporary worship music which includes a range of styles often influenced by popular music. This often leads to some conflict between older and younger congregants see contemporary worship. This is not new, the Christian pop music style began in the late 1960s and became very popular during the 1970s, as young hymnists sought ways in which to make the music of their religion relevant for their generation. This long tradition has resulted in a wide variety of hymns. Some modern churches include within hymnody the traditional hymn usually describing God, contemporary worship music often directed to God, and gospel music expressions of one's personal experience of God. This distinction is not perfectly clear, and purists remove the second two types from the classification as hymns. It is a matter of debate, even sometimes within a single congregation, often between revivalist and traditionalist movements. Topic. American developments African Americans developed a rich hymnody from spirituals during times of slavery to the modern, lively black gospel style. The first influences of African American culture into hymns came from Slave Songs of the United States a collection of slave hymns compiled by William Francis Allen who had difficulty pinning them down from the oral tradition, and though he succeeded, he points out the awe-inspiring effect of the hymns when sung in by their originators. Hymn writing, composition, performance and the publishing of Christian hymnals were prolific in the 19th century and were often linked to the abolitionist movement by many hymn writers. 
Surprisingly, Stephen Foster wrote a number of hymns that were used during church services during this era of publishing. Thomas Sims spread throughout churches a new idea of how to sing hymns, in which anyone could sing a hymn any way they felt led to. This idea was opposed by the views of Sims colleagues who felt it was, like 500 different tunes roared out at the same time. William Billings, a singing school teacher, created the first tune book with only American born compositions. Within his books, Billings did not put as much emphasis on common measure, which was the typical way hymns were sung, but he attempted to have a sufficiency in each measure. Boston's Handel and Haydn Society aimed at raising the level of church music in America, publishing their collection of church music. In the late 19th century Ira D. Sankey and Dwight L. Moody developed the relatively new subcategory of gospel hymns. Earlier in the 19th century, the use of musical notation, especially shape notes, exploded in America, and professional singing masters went from town to town teaching the population how to sing from sight, instead of the more common lining out that had been used before that. During this period hundreds of tune books were published, including B.F. White's Sacred Harp, and earlier works like the Missouri Harmony, Kentucky Harmony, Hesperian Harp, D.H. Mansfield's The American Vocalist, The Social Harp, The Southern Harmony, William Walker's Christian Harmony, Jeremiah Ingalls Christian Harmony, and literally many dozens of others. Shape notes were important in the spread of then more modern singing styles, with tenor-led four-part harmony based on older English West Gallery music, fugging sections, anthems and other more complex features. During this period, hymns were incredibly popular in the United States, and one or more of the above-mentioned tunebooks could be found in almost every household. It isn't uncommon to hear accounts of young people and teenagers gathering together to spend an afternoon singing hymns and anthems from tune books, which was considered great fun, and there are surviving accounts of Abraham Lincoln and his sweetheart singing together from the Missouri Harmony during his youth. By the 1860s musical reformers like Lowell Mason the so-called Better Music Boys were actively campaigning for the introduction of more refined and modern singing styles, and eventually these American tune books were replaced in many churches, starting in the northeast and urban areas, and spreading out into the countryside as people adopted the gentler, more soothing tones of Victorian hymnody, and even adopted dedicated, trained choirs to do their churches singing, rather than having the entire congregation participate. But in many rural areas the old traditions lived on, not in churches, but in weekly, monthly or annual conventions where people would meet to sing from their favorite tune books. The most popular one, and the only one that survived continuously in print, was the Sacred Harp, which could be found in the typical rural southern home right up until the living tradition was rediscovered by Alan Lomax in the 1960s although it had been well documented by musicologist George Pullen Jackson prior to this. Indeed. The most common book on. Since then there has been a renaissance in. Sacred harp singing. With annual conventions popping up in all 50 states and in a number of European countries recently, including the UK, Germany, Ireland and Poland, as well as in Australia, one today. Sacred harp singing is a vibrant and living tradition with thousands of enthusiastic participants all around the globe, drawn to the democratic principles of the tradition and exotic, beautiful sound of the music. Although the lyrics tend to be highly religious in nature, the tradition is largely secular, and participation if open to all who care to attend. Topic. Hymn meters The meter indicates the number of syllables for the lines in each stanza of a hymn. This provides a means of marrying the hymn's text with an appropriate hymn tune for singing. In practice many hymns conform to one of a relatively small number of meters syllable count and stress patterns. Care must be taken, however, to ensure that not only the meter of words and tune match, but also the stresses on the words in each line. Technically speaking an iambic tune, for instance, cannot be used with words of, say, trochaic meter. The meter is often denoted by a row of figures besides the name of the tune, such as 87.87.87, which would inform the reader that each verse has six lines, and that the first line has eight syllables, the second has seven, the third line eight, etc. The meter can also be described by initials, LM indicates long meter, which is 88.88, four lines, each eight syllables long, SM is short meter, 66.86, CM is common meter, 86.86, while DLM, DSM and DCM, the D 
stands for double are similar to their respective single meters except that they have eight lines in a verse instead of four. Also, if the number of syllables in one verse differ from another verse in the same hymn e.g., the hymn, I sing a song of the saints of God, the meter is called irregular. <laughs> Sikh hymnody The Sikh holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib Ji Punjabi, Guru Gratha Sahiba Punjabi pronunciation, U, Shbi, is a collection of hymns Shabad or Gurbani describing the qualities of God and why one should meditate on God's name. The Guru Granth Sahib is divided by their musical setting in different ragas into 1430 pages known as Ang's limbs in Sikh tradition. Guru Gobind Singh 1606 the tenth Guru, after adding Guru Tegh Bahadur's Bani to the Adi Granth affirmed the sacred text as his successor, elevating it to Guru Granth Sahib. The text remains the holy scripture of the Sikhs, regarded as the teachings of the ten Gurus. The role of Guru Granth Sahib, as a source or guide of prayer, is pivotal in Sikh worship. See also Carol Chorale Contemporary Catholic liturgical music Doxology Hymn Society in the United States and Canada Kafi List of Chinese hymn books List of English language hymnals by denomination List of Roman Catholic hymns Metrical Psalter Psalm Sacred Harp Shape Note Shabbat Vedic chant Topic. References Topic. Further reading Bradley, Ian. Abide with me, The World of Victorian Hymns. London, SCM. Press, 1997. ISBN 0-334-02703-9. Hughes, Charles, Albert Christ Janer, and Carlton Sprague Smith, eds. American Hymns, Old and New. New York, Columbia University Press, 1989. Two vols. N.B., Volume L., The Music, Harmonized, with Words, of the Selected Hymns of Various Christian Denominations, Sects, and Cults, Volume 2, Notes on the Hymns and Biographies of the Authors and Composers. ISBN 0-231-05148-4 set comprising both volumes. Weddell, Franklin S. Howe to use the hymnal. Independence, Missouri, Harold House, 1956. Wren, Brian. Praying Twice, The Music and Words of Congregational Song. Louisville, Westminster John Knox Press, 2000. ISBN 0-664-25670-8. E. Wynne James, Flame in the Mountains, Williams Pantyselin, Anne Griffiths and the Welsh Hymn Tall Y. Bont, Y. Lolfa, 2017, 320 pp. ISBN 978-1-78461-454-6 External links The links below are restricted to either material that is historical or resources that are non-denominational or interdenominational. Denomination-specific resources are mentioned from the relevant denomination-specific articles. The Hymn Society in the United States and Canada. Archived from the original on the 15th of December 2007. Hymnary.org. Extensive database of hymns and hymnology resources, incorporates the Dictionary of North American Hymnology. Hymns Without Words, a collection of freely downloadable recordings of classic hymns for use in congregational singing. The Hymn Society of Great Britain and Ireland. Examples of Byzantine music for hymns. 2,000 pages of hymns in both staff and pneumatic notation. Historichymns.com Site with extensive hymn searching tools